Today I'll be talking about the Navigator Cardiovascular Clinical Decision Support Monitor and demonstrating some of its functions by using a case study of a patient with cardiogenic shock. I will start by orientating you briefly to the Navigator graphical display. There are three main features. Firstly, you can see grey coloured X and Y axes. The Y axis has two scales. The left scale is the volume, PMS scale, and measures the patient's volume state. It moves vertically in response to changes in the patient's circulating volume state. Likewise, the right scale is the heart performance, EH scale, and measures the capacity of the heart to pump. It moves vertically in response to changes in cardiac performance. The X-axis is a resistance scale and measures the patient's resistive state or systemic vascular resistance, SVR. This scale moves horizontally to keep the target resistance in the target zone. Red tick marks on the three scales show the position of the patient. Secondly, you can see a solid yellow trapezoid in the centre of the graph. This area represents the patient target zone, or PTZ. The size of the PTZ is determined when the clinician enters the target mean arterial pressure, MAP, and cardiac output, CO, values. Thirdly, the patient status, or position, is identified by a red dot and arrow at the intersection of the yellow broken MAP and CO lines that extend from the PTZ. The goal of therapy is to move the patient into the PTZ. Additionally, in this case study, the red zone in the lower right corner of the display is prominent. The upper boundary of this zone represents a critically low oxygen delivery index, DO2I, or 300 mils per metre squared per minute. Ideally, patients should not be in the red zone. To begin with the case study, a 67-year-old male with a history of heavy smoking and no familial disease presents with a seven-hour history of severe and crushing chest pain with no radiation. His vital signs reveal a normal heart rate but with frequent extra beats and his blood pressure is very low. When examined, he looks pale with distended neck veins and feels peripherally cool. On auscultation, he has an added S3 heart sound and basal lung crackles. The examination findings of a poor circulation with low cardiac output and raised venous pressure suggest impending heart failure. A provisional diagnosis of probable myocardial infarction with cardiogenic shock is made. Angiography and echocardiography are scheduled and the patient is admitted to coronary care. Anticoagulant therapy is commenced. Continuous cardiac output is measured from the radial artery catheter using a lid co-monitor which is connected to Navigator. The patient's status shows his current MAP of 55 and CO of 3.1. His RAP is 13 and can be found in blue in the upper right data pane. I will now continue the Navigator simulation. The actual events displayed on the graph took place over a number of hours. The patient's status is located below the PTZ and in the red zone, as their DO2I is less than 300. The numbers on the heart performance EH scale are also labelled in red, indicating a critical low cardiac performance. I will come back to the interpretation of these numbers. In the situation of a low cardiac performance, the clinician may affect upward movement by increasing the patient's volume state and or cardiac performance. A fluid challenge is given to increase the patient's volume state. The patient's status is seen moving upward in response to the fluid and the MAP increases to the low target range of 62, shown when the MAP broken line disappeared in the PTZ. However, the CO remains below target, so a second fluid challenge is given. This time there is only slight upward movement of the patient's status in response to the increased volume. Heart performance, EH, decreases further and RAP increases to 16 with minimal changes to CO and MAP. These responses to a fluid challenge collectively indicate the patient is no longer volume responsive. The patients demonstrated four observations that suggest low volume responsiveness. They are a low EH, an EH value that decreases with volume administration, the RAP rose quickly with volume administration, and minimal movement of the patient's status towards the PTZ despite an increase on the volume PMS scale. Therefore, a inotropic agent is needed to increase cardiac performance. This change in therapy is important as the patient would be at risk of developing pulmonary edema had they continued to receive volume. A dibutamine infusion was commenced. The patient's status demonstrates improvement in cardiac performance with the addition of dibutamine and move to the PTZ with corresponding improvements to MAP and CO. Whilst the dibutamine is titrated, 
I will discuss factors that need consideration when red numbers appear on the high performance EH scale. The values appear in red when the EH is less than 0.3 and signify a low cardiac performance. Causes may include mechanical impediments to the heart, such as pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, pulmonary embolism, etc. In addition to intrinsic cardiac problems such as disorders of heart rate, rhythm, valves, ionotropy, systolic dysfunction and luciotropy, diastolic dysfunction. A low EH supports the clinician's provisional diagnosis of poor cardiac function. The clinician obtained an echocardiograph early to exclude correctable mechanical disorders as a reason for the low cardiac output. When stabilised, the patient proceeded to angiography when monitoring continued with navigator. Angiography confirmed a blocked right coronary artery as a cause of myocardial infarction. A stent was inserted successfully and the butamine was weaned uneventfully. The Navigator Cardiovascular Clinical Decision Support Monitor assisted the clinician by displaying a real-time physiological picture of the patient's circuitry status. The graphical interface supported the diagnosis of cardiogenic shock and displayed precise real-time reactions to cardiovascular management. Thank you.